Based on your research question, you have already selected suitable imaging spectroscopy data and pre-processed them if necessary. That included radiometric and geometric correction, as well as adjustments for atmospheric scattering and absorption effects to finally obtain surface reflectance data. Okay, what's next? Now, you need to decide which methods and software are suitable to answer your question. In addition, you have ideally already collected ground reference data to train the algorithms and to estimate the accuracy of the result. Hyperspectral data contains a wealth of information. However, with hundreds or more contiguous bands, these are often redundant, carrying highly intercorrelated information. Redundant data introduce noise, increase computational costs, and may lead to suboptimal model performances. The figure here illustrates how the predictive power of a classifier or regressor first increases as the number of features or bands used is increased, but then decreases. This phenomenon is known as the curse of dimensionality, or the Hughes phenomenon. It can therefore be useful to apply dimensionality reduction methods before or as part of the actual image analysis. Dimensionality reduction is typically done by feature extraction. That transforms the spectra to a lower dimensional representation or band selection that selects only a subset of most significant bands. Only now is your data ready for the actual analysis, and that is a wide field. You can apply a range of techniques to extract information from your imagery. In this course, we can only present some of the most common methods. Very broadly, we differentiate classification and quantification methods. Classification methods allow a direct identification of materials. Classification can be based on known reference spectra of pure materials, so-called end members. Prominent examples of classification techniques are the spectral angle mapper, the spectral feature fitting, but also machine learning techniques, such as support vector machine classification. In contrast, quantification methods allow the determination of material abundances in terms of percent fractional cover or the estimation of material contents and properties. Here, well-known examples are the spectral feature analysis, the spectral mixing analysis, and the broad field of radiative transfer models. In the following, we will take a closer look at some common techniques. In the end, the selected techniques mainly depend on the nature of the problem, as well as on the availability of ground reference data. For a general introduction to classification methods in remote sensing, we would like to refer you to the references given, while here we focus on those techniques that are used especially for hyperspectral data. One of them is the Spectra Angle Mapper, or SAM. SAM determines the spectral similarity between each image spectrum and a number of chosen pure reference spectra, the so-called N members, by calculating the angle between the spectra and treating them as vectors in a space with a dimensionality equal to the number of bands. The smaller the angle, the closer the match to the reference spectrum, and the more likely the image pixel represents the same material on the ground. Since only the direction of the spectra is used, and not their length, the technique is relatively insensitive to illumination differences. End member spectra can be taken from spectral libraries or extracted directly from the image. Another commonly used technique in the group of classification methods is the spectral feature fitting, or SFF. It measures the similarity of absorption features between image spectra and references spectra. For that, the continuum is removed from both datasets in a first step. Next, the reference spectra are fitted to each image spectrum considering a scale factor within a least squares estimation. The similarity is then evaluated based on the different scale values and root mean square errors, or RMSE. A high scale and low error indicate the best fit of a reference spectrum to an image spectrum. And finally, support vector machine, or SVM. SVM is a machine learning technique that is commonly used in classification as well as regression analysis. However, it is very widely used for classification tasks. SVM fits an optimal hyperplane in a multidimensional space to separate different classes by maximizing the margin, that is, the distance between the data points. SVM classifiers were often found to outperform other machine learning classifiers. Let's have a closer look at some well-known quantification methods. First, let me introduce you to the spectral mixture analysis, 
also called a linear spectral unmixing. It is used to determine the relative abundance of known materials within each image pixel based on the material's spectral characteristics. The reflectance of a pixel is assumed to be a linear combination of the reflectance of each material present within the pixel, weighted by their aerial coverage. The result is a map with subpixel fractional abundances for each material. Another important quantification method is the spectral feature analysis. It is based on the fact that contents or properties of materials are often manifested as spectral absorption features in the reflectance spectra. The spectral features used for the feature analysis may be the absorption band depth, such as shown here, but also the slope of the spectrum in a certain spectral range, or the ratio of selected spectral bands. These spectral features are then correlated to measured ground truth data to produce quantitative maps of material contents or properties. As compared to the two statistical approaches just described, the last quantification method I would like to present to you, the radiative transfer models, or RTMs, are physically based descriptions of the interaction of light with the atmosphere, water, or land surface. They are often used to model vegetation canopies, as shown in this example. In the forward mode, the RTM is built to simulate vegetation reflectance. Afterwards, the model can be used in the inverse mode to estimate biophysical and biochemical vegetation properties on the basis of the acquired images. Processing and analysis of hyperspectral data can be conducted using various software from commercial to free and open source ones, from those that come with graphical user interfaces or others that are script-based for writing your own code. You can choose what suits your situation and your previous experience best. In this course, we will use the free and open source Nmap Box, a plugin for QGIS that was developed as part of the Nmap science program. In order to train your algorithms and assess the accuracy of the results, you probably need some ground reference data. Always keep in mind that good reference data is often hard to come by for various reasons. For example, accessibility of your area of interest difficulties in spatial and or temporal representativeness of samples, or laborious and potentially costly analyses. And finally, there it is, the map product. Let's have a look at some examples where imaging spectroscopy data came in handy to derive information relevant for different fields of applications. As for instance, in mineral mapping, mapping of vegetation characteristics, mapping of soil properties, as well as water quality.